strong in memory. Arithmetic sequences, you add the same thing every single time, or you could be subtracting the same thing every time. Similarly, a geometric sequence is one in which you multiply by the same number every time. We call it a common ratio. Now, a reminder there in parentheses, division, if it looks like you're dividing every time, division is just multiplication by a fraction. Okay? Dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. Or dividing by three is the same as multiplying by a third. So keep that in the back of your mind if you look at one and you think that it's division, you still have to consider it as multiplication. <clears throat> and we call it a common ratio R. Uh, so here's our general form, just like yesterday. You start with your first term, a sub one. You multiply by the common ratio to get the second term. So if we multiply by the common ratio again, r times r is r squared. Um, so that's what the terms of your sequence look like. Obviously, that common ratio can't be zero. It also can't be one, because if it's one, then you don't really have a sequence. You just got the same number over and over and over and over again. <clears throat> All right. Recursive definition. Remember, this is the one that's not really as helpful, but sometimes this is the only way you can express something. a sub n, your current term, is equal to a sub n minus 1. That's the previous term times the common ratio. Or you can look at it from the perspective of a sub k plus 1. That's the next term is equal to a sub k, your current term, times the common ratio. Same difference, just different perspectives. Here's our explicit definition. This, one, this is the one that's more helpful. This is the one that's on the formula sheet for the final exam. a sub k is equal to your first term, a sub 1, times the common ratio raised to the k minus 1. So if we're looking for the 11th term, then our exponent is going to be the 10th, because you subtract 1 from the term. Um, so we'll look at that specific example here in a second. So, let's look at this sequence right here. 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. What is our common ratio? 2. We're multiplying by 2 every time, so r is equal to 2. Let's go ahead. <clears throat> um, let's just go ahead and figure out what the tenth term would be before we even get our rule, because we already have five terms. Going to 10 is not going to be that hard. 48 times 2 is 96. Okay, so what these numbers do get um, so Let's think about that before I did that. Okay, 48 times 2 is 96. Times 2 is 192. 192, 384, 78, Okay, so this should be our tenth term of our sequence. I think we go ahead and do this so that when we get our explicit formula, we can kind of use it as a check. Um, when we plug 10 into the equation, let's make sure we get the same answer there. All right, our recursive rule is a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times the common ratio, which is 2. Remember, you've got to list the first term, a sub 1 equals 3, for all n greater than or equal to 2. Just so that we're used to seeing the other form, I'm going to do that as well. a sub k plus 1 equals a sub k times 2. Now, typically, in, in mathematical terms, we would put that um, constant in front. So just keep that in, in your mind as well. Um, a sub 1 equals 3 for all k greater than or equal to 1. All right, our explicit rule, a sub n is equal to the first term 3 times the common ratio 2 to the n minus 1. Now, that is not equal to 6 to the n minus 1. Remember those exponent rules. The 2 is being raised to that exponent. You can't change that base uh, unless they have the same base. All right. Um, now, technically, there's some simplifying that we can do here <coughs> using properties of exponents. 
<clears throat> kind of going backwards. Okay, we're not really used to going in this direction with our properties and exponents. But think about it for a second. If you have a quotient, what do you do with the exponents? You subtract. So 2 to the n over 2 first can be written as 2 to the n minus 1. I'm writing it this way so that I can simplify my explicit formula to be 3 over 2 times 2 to the nth. Okay. I don't really know that they're going to do that, but I did want to show you that in case they do um, change, excuse me, uh, change the form. I want you to think that because this doesn't have an n minus 1, it can't be the explicit formula. Okay. So you can rewrite it using the properties of exponents. So we could use either one of these to find the tenth term of our sequence. a sub 10, and I'm going to use both of them just so you can see how each one works. Plug in 10 for n, so that is 3 times 2 to the ninth, which should be 1,536, so let's make sure it is. Okay, 1,300, excuse me, 1,536. I could also use the other form, 3 halves times 2 to the 10th, which looks like it would give us a very different answer, but it actually gives us the same answer. Not 100, just 10. It does give us the same answer, 1,536. So that's the way you could check. Okay, if, if they ask you, if they give you a sequence and they ask you what could be an explicit formula for this sequence, if you don't really remember this stuff and you don't really know where to go or you don't know how to simplify it, just say, okay, well, hey, I know my third term is 12. Plug a 3 in and see which one gives you an answer of 12. Uh, maybe you could check a couple more of them just to make sure, uh, but that's just a, a strategy there. <clears throat> given a multiple choice question for one of these. All right, let's look at example B because this one looks a little weird. We've got 10 to the negative third, 10 to the negative first, 10, 10 cubed, and 10 to the fifth. So what are we multiplying by every time? Okay, we're adding two to the exponent every time. Remember properties of exponents. You multiply things that have the same base, you add their exponents. So we're multiplying by 10 squared here every time. Now let me show you something that can help you out with figuring out what your common ratio is. <coughs> Excuse me. If you don't see it right off the bat. Think about this. The common ratio is what I'm multiplying by every time. So I can pick any two terms and you take the, the last one and you divide it by the previous one. And that gives you the common ratio. I could have picked any two consecutive terms. Um, I could have picked 10 and 10 to the negative first. That's 1 minus negative 1. That is 2. All right. So if, if the common ratio, usually the common difference is pretty obvious. Figuring out how, what you're adding or subtracting is pretty obvious. Sometimes the common ratio, not so obvious. So here's a strategy for figuring it out. Take any two consecutive terms, you divide the, uh, the uh, last one by the previous one. That will give you the common ratio. Okay, so this common ratio is 10 squared or 100. We'll see which way it's, it's easier to express it here in a second. So our recursive definition would be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times 10 squared or 100. a sub 1 is 10 to the negative third for all n greater than or equal to 2. Not going to write the other form because it's the same thing. All right, our explicit formula, a sub n is equal to, you take the first term, 10 to the negative third times the common ratio, 10 squared, to the n minus 1. There's a lot of simplifying that we can do with this one. 
Um, when we raise a power to a power, like we're doing with the squared and the n minus 1, what do we do? We multiply. Uh, now you got to remember to distribute in this case because it's 2 times n minus 1. You've got to distribute the 2. And then we're multiplying something that has the same base, so we add their exponents. So this can be expressed as 10 to the 2n minus 5. That's how the, this explicit formula reduces quite a bit. So let's find our tenth term. 10 to the 2 times 10 minus 5. That would be 10 to the 18th. And I'm going to leave it in that form, mostly because I don't think the calculator would give me that many digits. And second of all, that's the form that the rest of the sequence is in. So I'm just going to leave it. Yes, sir. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 5 is 15. Not 18. I, I really don't know where 18 came from. Figuring all the tubes, I guess. All right, thank you. 10 to the 15th. Uh, and we could check this really quick. If our exponents were adding 2 to the exponent every time, so we've got 7, 9, 11, 13, 15 would get us to the 10th term. So you can check it uh, to make sure that you did it correct. Okay.